Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Maths channel. Okay, this is now, um, this is question number seven from the end of topic worksheet that I am answering. And it's also question number eight from the March, February, March paper for um, March 2019. Okay, um, so this is a question which I've answered the parts one, two, and three, four. Um, in the previous video and I'm now answering part four so one to one to three I've answered in the previous video and I'm going to answer part four in this video I wanted to break it up because it was a bit long that video so um, I want to explain explain this part this is actually the part that the student was asking about and I want to go into some detail in this question and show how to answer it in a couple of different ways okay because this is actually the part of this topic which a lot of students have issues with. So I want to take my time and explain it in a proper way so that everyone hopefully understands what's going on. So if you want to watch the first parts of this video, then you'll see that I have put a card here that will appear from time to time, which takes you to the previous video. So parts one, two, and three. And um, you can watch those if, you're, if you want to see how we got up to this stage but basically what we've done now is they gave us a function f for which uh, they told us that the domain is values of x is uh, less than one okay and we told we were told to find the inverse function and we were told to find the domain of the inverse function and we worked out that the domain of the inverse function is the same as the range of this function and we worked out that the range of this function is found um or we found it to be f of x is greater than 4. f of x is greater than 4. And you can see how we did that in the previous video. Okay, here's a little glimpse at what we did before. Okay, so we found the range of the original function after having completed the square. Um, and we then used that to find the, of course, the, the range of the original function is the same as the domain of the inverse. Okay, so that's all in, in the previous video explained. So, Completing the square, as we did in the previous part, you get x minus 2 squared plus 3. Okay, and the domain of this is x is less than 1. So we're asked here to find an expression for g of f of x. So now we've got, we're going to be dealing with this composite function, g of f of x. All right, so first let's deal with the, the part where we have to find an expression for this composite function, which is pretty simple. You just have to take the function mentioned second, and substitute that into the first function. So this f of x goes into g. So basically f of x goes into g. So I'm going to replace this x with whatever f of x is, basically. You can think of it as uh, g of x is 2 over x minus 1. So g of f of x is 2 over, replace the x with f of x. So 2 over f of x minus 1, which will be 2 over, and then we take whatever this is. I'm going to put it in this form where it's completed the square already. So you have x minus 2 squared plus 3, and then you've got your minus 1. So that gives us 2 over x minus 2 squared plus 2. So here we have the inverse function g of f of x, and that's part of our answer. Okay, we can leave it in this form, that's perfectly fine. We could also leave it in this form where we just put x squared minus 4x plus 7 minus 1, which would be plus 6, and that would be perfectly fine as well. Now, the part that's a bit more challenging in this question is stating the range of g of f of x. A lot of students have a problem with that. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do this in two ways. All right, now the first way that we're going to do this in is we're going to consider the following. We know that g of f of x, what does it mean? If we think about the process, you've got to take x and x goes into the function f. And then what, when x comes, goes into the function f, what comes out of f of x goes into the function g. Okay, so the output of function f goes into the function g. All right, so what can go into function f? What are the values of x that can go into function f? Well, we know though those are the values where x is less than 1 because that's the domain of function f. So if we write down here, I'm going to write down here what function f of x is. It's x minus 2 squared plus 2, and x is less than 1 is his domain. Okay, and the function g of x, I'll write that down here as well. 
That's 2 over x minus 1. And the, the domain of that is x is greater than 1. The domain of g of x is x is greater than 1. That's what they've given us, right? So I know that what goes into function g, let me just put this a bit lower down so we can see what's happening. What goes into function um, f first has to be less than 1. x must be less than 1. And what goes into function g is going to be what comes out of function f, okay, with this condition, which is the range of function f. Now, the range of function f, as we just discussed in the last question, is all the values of y which are greater than 4. So, we know that the output of function f must be greater than 4. So, the input of function g are all values greater than 4. So, the x values that can go into function g, okay, must be values of x which are greater than 4, okay, because for the composite function g of f of x, f of x has to go inside g. And what can come out of f of x? Only values which are greater than 4. So if we consider the function g, okay, if we draw the function g, 2 over x minus 1, this is a reciprocal function. A reciprocal function has an asymptote. So I'm going to draw this, I'm going to draw this first without any Restriction. So I'm going to just draw the asymptote here. Okay, at x equals 1. Because we know that 2 over x minus 1, the denominator cannot be 0. So x minus 1 can't be 0, so x can't be 1. x is equals 1 is the asymptote. And we know that if we draw this graph, it's going to cut the y-axis when x is 0, which is at minus 2, will be over here. So if we were to draw this graph... You know, normally it would look something like this. Okay. However, um, and on this side it will go like this. It will go like this. It will get closer and closer to the x-axis without ever actually touching it. Okay. So that's how it would look. Now, we know that our graph has some restrictions. The restrictions are, okay, is that... Our graph can only have inputs, okay, which are greater than 4. Because what goes into this function g in our composite function is the output of f, which is greater than 4. So that means I've got to get rid of all of this part here. All of that has to go. And I have to go up to 4. And that's where I have to start. And I have to get rid of everything before 4. So all of this has to go. So my graph is going to start from this value over here, okay, and it's going to go on like this forever. So it's going to get closer and closer and closer to the y-axis. So you can see that it will never go below the y-axis because it doesn't exist on this side. Okay, it doesn't say so it's going to, it's, its lower limit is going to be zero. And it's going to go up to this point here, up to this point here. It's range, the range of this composite function okay, is going to be between 0 and this point here. And what is this point here? Well, it was what comes out of g of x when I put 4 inside it. So when I put 4 inside g of x, I'm going to have 2 over 4 minus 1, which is 2 thirds. So we can say that the range, the range of our function g of f of x is y is between... 0 and 2 thirds. Okay, so that's how we can get the range. So that's the range, and that is our inverse function. That, that is our composite function, not the, the inverse, the, the composite function. So there's a composite function, and there's a range of the composite function. Okay, so that's one way of getting the answer. That's one way of getting the answer. By basically considering the output of the inner function as being the input of the outer function and seeing what the output of the outer function is given that inner function you know input okay so that's one way of doing it there's also another way of doing this question is and that's by considering the actual composite function itself which we already worked out to be 2 over x minus 2 squared plus 2. And we have to consider what 
is the domain of this function and then see what values can come out of it given its domain. We consider the function as defined in the question x is less than 1 and this one x is greater than 1. Is that right? Yeah, okay. So now, when we're considering this part, we think about what is the domain of this composite function. Now, the domain of the composite function, you can think of it as, okay, it has to fulfill two conditions. First of all, um, it has to satisfy the condition for the domain of f of x. The domain of f of x is going to be x is less than 1. And it has to also be such that, as we said, when you have g of f of x, okay, so f goes into g, and then g goes into, um, f goes into g, okay, so, so, so x goes into f, and f goes into g. Let me just write that again over here. So we know that g of f of x, we have x goes into f, and f goes into g. So what can go into f? Well, x values which are less than 1. What can go into g? What can go into g? Okay, is x values which are greater than 1. Okay, so whatever can go into g are x values which are greater than 1. So what we can say is, f has to go into g. So that means, whatever f is, which is x minus 2 squared plus 3, okay, we can only put into g, okay, all the values which are greater than 1 from here, okay? Only the values which are greater than 1 from this. So, whatever x value goes into g, okay, um, must fulfill this condition for f as well, okay? Any x value that goes into, into the function f must have an output which is greater than 1. Okay, so the, the function of f must give an output greater than 1 for it to be able to go into g, because in g only outputs greater than 1 can go into it. So what we can do is we can solve this inequality, all right, for g of x, that x minus 2 squared plus 3 has to be greater than 1. Okay, this is f going into g. Now, if we think about this, this also has a restriction that x is less than 1 in here which means, as we said, the output of this is always going to be greater than 4. We know that the range of this is x is greater than 4, so this is true for all values of x that we can use. This is true. This is going to be true. All right, And we, can, we, we know that the, the x values that can go into g, therefore, are going to be x is less than 1. Okay, They will all be fine. Well, any values of x that we can put into the function f will give us values which are greater than 1. So therefore, we can say that the common domain for both of them is x is less than 1. Okay, because any values of x which are less than 1 will give us a value of greater than 1. In fact, any value of x I put into here is going to give us a value greater than 1 because this function will always be, its minimum value is 3. That's a minimum y value, and it's always going to be about, above 1. But for our function, it even starts at 4 even. Right, because it's limited from one and below. So this has no there's no values of x that will give us any problems um, for causing the input of uh, g of x to have any problems from f of x. So we can say that therefore the domain of g of f of x, the domain of g of f of x is common between these two, which is x is less than one. Okay, so we can say the domain of g of x is x is less than one. So now we've got to think about the maximum and minimum values or the range of g of f of x when x is less than 1. Now, it's not easy for us to draw a function such as this. All right, It's not really um, uh, an easy function to draw. Okay, It's one of those uh, a strange type of function which we can't draw so easily. However, we can use some thinking behind uh, trying to think about what its lowest and highest values will be. Okay, so I know that the domain is basic from negative infinity up to positive 1. Okay, now, if I just consider this expression by itself, 2 over x minus 2 squared plus 2, I know that the maximum value of this will be when the denominator is as small as possible, and the, mi the minimum value of this will be when the denominator is as large as possible. Okay. So the biggest value of this expression 
when you have a fraction, the biggest value is when the denominator is as big as possible. And the, 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 sorry, the, sorry, the denominator is as small as possible. Okay, so when you have a small denominator, then like if I divide 2 by 1, I'm going to get 2. If I do divide by 2 by 100, I'm going to get a really small value. But if I do divide 2 by 100, it's going to be a really big value. It's going to be 2 times 100. So the, the smaller the denominator gets, the bigger my whole answer gets. So if the denominator is as small as possible, this will give me the, the maximum value of my expression. Okay, so what is the smallest that this can ever be? Now the smallest that this can ever be is 2. When x equals 2, this is going to become um, 2. So my maximum value of this is going to be 1. However, however, we have a condition x can't equal 2. Okay, you know that as we know, the minimum value of this is going to be two if we were thinking about it as, um, you know, the vertex, like a quadratic, minus two and two. So that's the minimum value. However, we can't reach that minimum value, okay, because our domain starts from x is less than one, okay. So sorry, this will be plus two, not minus two. Okay, so when x is less than one, so now uh, we can't go any further than x equals one. Right, so uh, we know that when x equals one, this this thing had a value of, um, this part of it had a value of three. So when x equals one, let's see what happens. So x equals one. This is going to be when x equals one, you're going to have two over one minus two squared plus two, which is two over one minus one squared plus two, which is two over three. Okay, so x equals two-thirds, okay, um, sorry, y equals two-thirds, that's going to be the, the value of this, we'll have two over three. Okay, so that's going to be the maximum value, the maximum value is going to be two-thirds. Okay, so y is going to be two-thirds, now it's not going to reach two-thirds because we know that x is less than one, not equal to one, so y is less than two-thirds, it's going to be less than two-thirds for sure. Now we're going to think about the smallest possible value of this. The smallest possible value of this fraction is when this thing is as big as possible. Okay, now this thing, x can go down to negative infinity. Now if I put x as negative infinity, I'm going to have negative infinity squared, which is going to be positive. So you'll end up with the denominator being a positive. You have 2 over a very huge positive number, which is going to be something close to 0. So that means the smallest value this will take is something below zero. It won't reach zero. It'll be something, it can never reach infinity, of course. So it's going to be above zero, but it's going to tend towards zero on this side. So the, the, the range of this function is from zero between y, the y values between zero and two thirds. Okay, so that's another way of uh, working out the same thing that we worked out earlier. This is a bit more complicated. I personally prefer this method over here okay just taking the input of f of x seeing what its output is and taking that as the input of g of x and working out what the output of g of x is with that input and that will be the output of the composite function all right now so that's that's two ways of answering this question okay so this is the, really the topic that most students have difficulty understanding but um hopefully that was a bit clear for you and uh, you understand it now. Um, so other questions from this particular uh, question here, the p other parts of the question, I'm going to put a link for that in this video over here. In fact, I'll put that at the end. In this video, in this, in this link over here, I'll have other questions from this February, March 2019 paper. In this link over here, I'll have questions, other questions from this worksheet, including the earlier part of this question. Um, you'll find other questions in general from uh, functions of um, Cambridge uh, P1. You'll find them in this playlist over here. In the playlist over here, well, not won't be playlist. Here will be a link to the video which goes through questions part one, two, and three of the same question. And um, yeah, so if you'd like to uh, watch other videos from other parts like Edexcel or IGCSC or whatever, you can click on the link that will show on the top here during the video, um, which takes you to um, a video explaining how to use my channel. Thank you for watching and see you soon.